Hey guys, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. Mr. Shimmy back here. Uh, hope you guys can hear me okay. Good. Today's topic is a rather serious one. I hope that uh, hope you guys can hear me okay and uh, I'm loud and clear. Okay, today's show is about death. D-E-A-T-H, muerto in Spanish. It's a subject that a lot of people want to avoid for uh, reasons that make them feel uncomfortable. And rightfully so, because... As they say, when you're dead, you gone, man. Game over. Now me, I'm a little different. I don't actually fear death, but I am aware of it. And I hope that you guys can gain some power, knowledge, and strength by being aware of your own mortality, right? Every living thing that's born is going to die. Whether you're a plant, whether you're an animal, single cell organism, whatever. You know, unless you're a fucking robot, well, maybe even then, if you're a robot, machine, car, motorbike, whatever, uh, still your internals are going to expire at some point. Nothing is like forever, right? So I want for most of you people listening to this show, if not all of you, to go on Google either right now. Actually, don't even wait till the end of this show. Well, if you have another phone or computer handy, go and do this. Go and Google, just go and Google death clock. Okay, and there's probably about at least a dozen sites that have these things. It's a, it's a free, free little program or application where you basically enter your birthday and you'll enter your current age, your BMI, body mass index, your height, weight, and answer a simple, probably five question survey about, you know, do you live in a city or a country? Do you smoke? Are you overweight? Any pre existing conditions, diseases? And probably one of the most important questions is how old are your parents? Are your parents still alive? And at what age did they die at or whatever, right? Because that's a big determining factor, your genetics. Genetics, environment, and lifestyle basically determine what your lifespan is, okay? For humans, animals, plants, etc. And it's something very serious to take into consideration. And because this shit transcends whatever religious beliefs, doctrines, dogmas, or holy shit you might believe in, you know, and no matter what kind of, <laughs> I don't care what, especially this goes out to Abrahamic religions, you know, Christians, Muslims, Jews. Yeah, I said the J word, I'll say it again, Jews. <laughs> Ban the channel, <laughs> you know, but uh, regardless, man, uh, you're Buddhist, you're atheist, you're, you're a, you worship Shemism like me, <laughs> my own religion and lifestyle, it doesn't matter. You're a mortal being if you're listening to these words right now, or maybe you're an AI in the future, if you happen to get this, you know, 10 or 20 years in the future, but I'm sure my channel will be banned by then. It might be banned by next week for all who knows with all the shit that I talk. But uh, yeah, go ahead and Google, Google uh, what a death, go to, go to a death clock site and punch these numbers in. And you might be surprised, shocked, or scared, regardless of your age, whether you're 18 or 81, if you're listening to these words, you can you can pull this information up and see for yourself and see that it's actually fairly accurate, you know, and life insurance companies, um, they actually do the same shit. You know, I, I personally I purchased a life insurance policy that I that I no longer have. I canceled it after like a year or so because I realized that, you know, this shit's basically a scam. It's invalid. And basically, you're not going to be here to fuck with it or you know, argue moot points or whatever. So I realize the scam's a scam ahead of time, right? But I think around the year 2009 or 2010, I, I left America for the Dominican Republic. And since I currently have two kids, I decided to um, get a life insurance policy, just a very basic one, right? And it was some basic coverage amount, like 250K for fucking, I think it was like only $16 a month or something at the time. And I was eligible for it. And uh, it was like from the Snoopy, just so you know, for the record, it was from the Snoopy company, MetLife or whatever, Metropolitan Life. And at the particular time, I was actually living in an office space in Florida. I didn't even have an apartment. I lost the lease on my apartment, like the year lease was up. And my credit was like so fucked up and torched and bad from marriage, divorce, you know, family fucking up my house payments and shit. That, yeah, it's a long story. But basically it, in America, if you don't have good credit or at least marginal credit, like below 600 or whatever, you really can't even rent an apartment in most cases unless you find some Craigslist shit or a fucking trailer or some shit like that. So I ended up rent, renting out another, yet another commercial office space and living in this motherfucker 
a fucking windowless office space in Melbourne, Florida for like $99 a month. But it was air conditioned and Wi-Fi and I'd work all day and night anyway. It's not like I really had much time to sleep or anything anyway. So it, it was a hustle, right? It's a video hustle. One of the many sacrifices I made to make my movies and get in the position where I'm at now. And I know most people are not willing to do these things and make such sacrifices. So therefore I went ahead and did them, right? So before I took this trip to DR, I, I got the life insurance policy, signed up for it online. And they said, we're going to send, they said, we're going to send somebody to your residence or whatever, a policy adjuster claim guy or policy startup kind of guy to go and evaluate you or whatever. Right? You, you can't just buy ins ins life insurance without getting qualified for it, I guess. They probably want to make sure you don't have cancer, AIDS, or ain't going to die next week or some shit, right? Or other, everyone will be doing it, right? Like, like it's like a lottery you can't lose, right? So um, I, I told the people, uh, well, um, I didn't tell them I was like basically homeless at the time, you know? I, I said, you have to come meet me in my office space during business hours, you know, trying to have a little bit of dignity about the shit, right? So they said this guy, you know, around 10 a.m. or whatever, he comes, knocks on my office space door, you know, professional guy, he's wearing a shirt and a tie, and he's got this, like, doctor's kind of mm, folio briefcase with him. And out of this doctor's folio briefcase, he takes out the paperwork for the policy, and is like a big, thick questionnaire packet. But inside this doctor's briefcase thing, there's a scale, right? So <laughs> this is very interesting here. It's like, he want, they want to pre-qualify you for life insurance. So the guy has me, he weighs me on the scale. He takes out... Uh, whatever you call that blood pressure cuff thing that they pump up on your arm. He checks all my vital signs, weighs me. Uh, he even like has some vial of some shit. He takes a blood sample from me. He explains to me, we want to check and make sure that you don't have AIDS or some shit like that and whatever. And I understood all this shit. So, um, and then he pulls out the folio or whatever. And he asks me a very, he says, this is an important question, Shimmy. Um, do you want, he says, do you want a 15 year policy or a 30 year policy? Basically, it means like, do you plan on dying or do you see yourself living beyond 15 or 30 years and your, your monthly payment is like based upon whatever answer you choose or some shit like that, right? So I said to the guy, um, could I get back to you tomorrow or the end of the next business day or some shit after you've done all you did all the vitals and all that shit, lab work, everything checks out okay, right? So um, the fucking guy, he calls me back up the next day and he's like, okay, so do you agree to the 15-year policy or the 30-year policy? And I said to him, um, I had to go and Google an answer first, right? So I went on Google, because <laughs> I'm just like a Googling kind of motherfucker, and I typed in average lifespan or uh, average life expectancy of black man in America even though I'm half black slash Ethiopian, it actually makes a big difference after all. But I wrote average lifespan of black man in America. And astonishingly, the answer was age 55. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? So me being 40 years old now, and I was like, this was a while ago, almost a decade ago. So I said to the guy, uh, well, you know, I'll take the 30-year policy or whatever, because I think I'm going to live past 55 or whatever. And he's like, okay, your monthly premium, sir, will be $16.79 a month, and it's it's a fucking ride, rider policy or some shit, something I don't understand or whatever. It sounds like some fucking scam. And like on the last part of the, the life insurance clause, the dude says, uh, okay, now you need, you need to answer this questionnaire honestly. Um, are you, uh, are you, or have you ever been involved? These are honest questions on the survey. Have you ever been involved in auto racing, cave diving, skydiving, hot air ballooning, like basic motorcycle racing, like all kinds of like basically high risk sports or activities. And, uh, like, honestly, my answer is like, yes, to damn near 80, 85% of all the questions. You know, I'm an ex race car driver. I do like jumping off of fucking cliffs and shit. I just went parasailing in Medellin a couple of months ago. I mean, I'm I'm a kind of motherfucker that will jump off a mountain and whatever with a parachute, you know. Provided I've seen a thousand people do it before me and do it unscathed, I'll do it, you know. I ride airplanes going 600 miles an hour up 30,000, 40,000 feet up in the sky without thinking about it because thousands of people do this safely every day, you know. Most of you drive cars on the freeway at some point in your life. You know, you're driving a 4,000 pound metal box 
metal, plastic, and rubber fucking held together by stitch welds and nuts and bolts, you know, on a fucking $40 steel frame. Like, what the fuck? And you're doing this with people who have various skill levels, you know? Driving is actually one of the most dangerous things that you can do in life, you know? At least in flying, the plane likely ain't going to crash into another plane in the sky. But the question is, how much faith do you have in the average motherfucker on the freeway, you know? I feel much safer on a racetrack and on a, on a circuit with other experienced drivers and a fucking roll bar, roll cage, no mex fireproof underwear, all that shit, you know, with certified motherfuckers, you know, and, you know, and, and safety to inspected vehicles, you know? So yeah, man, you guys often, people often ridicule me on the internet saying, oh my God, you're doing all this dangerous shit. You're fucking all these hoes, quote unquote, you're going to get the AIDS and this and that and die and this and that. And I say, whoa, but you guys are commuting in traffic to work at, you know, 60, 80, a hundred miles an hour. You know, and all it takes is a motherfucker to send a text or for you to glance down at your phone and you're a goner, man. What the fuck? You think I live a risky lifestyle? <laughs> Nigga, please. So, really. So, so anyway, getting back to my topic, I go off tangent easily here. I, I like to rant and rumble. Um, go and do this death clock calculator thing, right? And it will really change. It really should change your life and the way you perceive and value your own life because this should transcend whatever facts, factual data should transcend whatever religious or family or frenemy enemy type of program. And you may have been indoctrinated with for a variety of reasons, right? Realize that society wants to keep most people controlled and pretty much working to fuel the government machine or the family machine, or, you know, basically every it's, it puts everyone's needs and wants above your own okay your family does not in general does not want you to be happy your girlfriend wife boyfriend husband probably does not want you to be happy at least ultimately at the level that you want you know nobody really ultimately knows the extent of what it takes for you to be happy except for you you know so having this death clock thing will really make you reframe your life and uh just reconsider a lot of the decisions that you guys are making and doing every day on just automatic mode, right? I did this shit a long time ago. That's why people, that's why I just have this, this just wake up excited to run and do shit and, you know, make sure that my body's in optimum health. That's why I buy so many goddamn vitamins, protein powders, amino acids, and do my cardio, do my running, and do my fucking healthy fucking routine to extend my lifespan, right? Because I know that for a fact, when I'm gone, I'm gone. There's only one motherfucking shimmy. I, I can make as many copies, clones of myself, and have as many kids as I want, but I'm only one conscious body. And with any hope, the, these shows and you know blog, blogs, podcasts, movies, and episodes and shit will outlive me well into the future. You know, For instance, Michael Jackson is already dead and gone, but I play his music every day. He lives on vicariously through people, through his music and videos. And, you know, it's, it's a goddamn shame, in my opinion, that people want to uh, remove people's memories, remove their statues, remove their shit off the airwaves and whatever. It's a goddamn travesty because a lot of people devote their lives to basically most people, most people really, truly want to be immortal. That's why they want to have big funerals and big monuments and, you know, like, quote unquote, be remembered, right? Well, my thing is like, if you really want to be remembered, you should be doing shit to impact society in a positive manner. Like I am, you should be building homes. You should be having products, movies, businesses, land, fucking houses, apartments, fucking, you should be having shit on lock for future generations. You should have streets named after you, et cetera, et cetera. And most people are not even thinking this. Most people are waking up, doing some goddamn job they hate, to do, go and pay for that little shitty, shitty fucking apartment or condo so they can go drive their shitty car that's going to be dead in about five years and worth nothing. And, uh, you know, go home to some shitty fucked up relationship with a nigger or a bitch that don't give a fuck about them ultimately that they're just using to get another house or car or social status or some shit. And people just don't realize how much of a fucking hamster wheel they're on, right? They don't realize the death clock is motherfucking ticking and they, they are not. 
they are not making pornos. They're not having orgies and they're not cliff diving and underwater, you know, doing shit. And you know what I'm saying? They're not enjoying their life because they're too busy caught up in the moment of handling shit to get material possessions that they think are going to make them ultimately happy. And usually they don't, you know, I'm doing this show because I made a lot of mistakes thankfully and i'm thankful that i made them at a young age i, I keep reiterating all this all the time you know i, I go look at my fucking ebook it's pr practically free now by the way called epimp it tells my story of how i made over a million dollars by the time i was like 20 years old you know doing my internet adult webmaster business or whatever and in doing so i was the race car driver i got married had kids bought homes did investments and uh all kinds of shit, had over a hundred cars. I thought cars were the key or whatever to happiness and shit. And it's one reason why I hate on cars to this day is because I wasted so many opportunities by just buying fucking cars and racing because I thought it would make me happy. But you know, I, I could have, uh, I could have had fucking 30 more wives. I could have had 30 more children. I could have done so many other things to enrich my life at the time with that, those money and wealth and resources, but I decided not to. You know, I decided to devote all my resources and shit to one woman and one family and one this and that. And I tried to help and hook up so many people along the way that as of right now, today, they're still in fucked up positions or either dead, broke, disheveled or in uh, just fucked up predicaments or whatever. So I have learned to not give away my heartbeats to people who don't care about my happiness. You know, I care. I care about reciprocating with people. You know what I'm saying? Most relationships people are in are not anywhere near equal reciprocity. And that's pretty fucked. If you find one, hold on to them. They're special because they're fucking rare, right? But for the most part, most people are out for themselves. Most people are out to like, as, as they say, make a better life for themselves or their children, as they say. They want their children to have the best of things and have the things they didn't have and quote unquote and this and that without... Without the life lessons, though, all these things are kind of worthless, you know? It, it's, it is a travesty to waste your life with someone who is entitled and feels like you owe them something just for the privilege of being in their company. It, it's like one of the most fucked up things that uh, I, I, I think that is uh, in existence anyway. So, again, semi <laughs> side ranting, talking about personal shit again, but it's important that I put this out there so you guys get a framework of where I'm coming from, right? So if you haven't done so by now, go, go and do the death clock thing on the internet. Go and type in your age. Go and type in your body weight, your body mass. And I think a lot of them, they'll ask you, do you live in a city or a countryside? Do you drive or do you walk? Uh, and they'll ask you, like, uh, how much exercise do you get per week or per day? You know, zero hours, an hour a day or whatever. And you can, you can actually fidget around with these kind of calculators and get a better idea of how you can extend your lifespan. Such as, if you smoke cigarettes, nicotine, if you stop smoking, you might live longer. Play with it in the calculator and see, you know? If you enjoy smoking and get great enjoyment out of it, maybe you shouldn't quit because there is a balance. There's a certain balance in life of pain and pleasure. You see, everything that we do slowly kills ourselves or helps us live longer, right? I take my vitamins, I take my, uh, what the fuck, I take vitamins, workout supplements, testosterone, you name it, in order to feel healthier, have more energy, do more, be more productive, and live longer. Surprise, surprise. So I consider these to be good investments, right? Anything that makes my life more comfortable is a good investment. Therefore, I buy high quality socks, high quality running shoes. I live in what I consider a high quality neighborhood. You know, I have a swimming pool, a very large one here. I have a comfortable condo for a change with air conditioning. There are no mosquitoes biting me at nighttime, which also helps extend my lifespan. I don't have a nagging bitch in my house, which extends my lifespan. You know, stress, was, stress is a very big factor or a killer, actually. I'm surprised a lot of the death clocks do not have a stress option or whatever, but um, if you go ahead and fuck with the numbers and stats on these things, you'll find that if you fidget stuff around, like change, you know, I don't work out till I work out one hour per day, that could extend your lifespan by five, 10, 15 years. You know, if you, t if you quit smoking or whatever, if you answer, you're not a smoker or if you're not a drinker, like I'm not a drinker, I don't drink alcohol, I don't drink beer. 
I might have alcohol, actually. I might have a drink of fucking some real good shit, whiskey, vodka, or, you know, ties tend to love uh, Johnny Walker, Black Label. You know, I'll drink some high-quality shit. I'll smoke some high-quality shit, too, you know? But I'm not just going to have fucking cigarettes, nicotine, tobacco, and beer just poisoning my body every goddamn day. And for, for you guys that don't know, the, the effects of beer, good fucking Lord, man. You, it's, not, it's bad enough you're putting alcohol in your body, low-quality alcohol at that, beer and malt liquor and all that crud. But beer has estrogen, meaning it's going to give you moobs, man boobs, and a big fucking round exercise ball belly with hard fucking fat. You're going to look down and not even be able to see your own goddamn dick, you know? So if you're one of these stupid ass fucks that just drinks beer, for Christ's sakes, you know, if you have to drink alcohol, drink vodka, it's one of the most purest forms or at least one of the most least toxic forms of alcohol, certainly less toxic than beer. Just me personally, I cannot digest beer. Um, I've told people this, you know, throughout my life, like, hey, I don't drink beer. I'll have a drink with you, but I can't drink beer. You know, it's just like my body can't process it. I'll throw up within within the hour if I have even a quarter or a half a bottle of beer. I, I just can't take it. My stomach can't, you know, I can't break it down. You know, I, I can't. It's something that I can't change. OK, I don't have a tolerance for it. So uh, maybe it's the hops. Maybe it's the for whatever reason, I don't, I lack the enzyme to, uh, crunch it down or whatever genetics, I suppose, but my strengths are in other areas. Right. So anyway, yeah, man, um, going back to the death clock thing, right. Uh, I, I bring this up because there's actually a bank in, uh, one of my old neighborhoods in Florida. Right. I, I, I live in a white people neighborhood, right. I don't, I don't, I don't live in nigger town. Okay. I don't live in darky town. Yeah. I did say the N word I'm allowed. So, in in in, uh, in Cracker Town, in White People Town, White People Land, uh, it's actually full of banks. You know, I, I go running through the neighborhood, and there are banks everywhere. Basically, in a black neighborhood, these banks would be liquor stores, gun stores, liquor stores, gun stores, Baptist church, liquor store, gun store, Baptist church, fucking you know, Muslim mosque or some shit. Then another church, then another liquor store, McDonald's, church's chicken, fried chicken, Popeyes chicken, gun store, and that's pretty much the makeup of the neighborhood. You know, this, this shit will repeat itself about cut and pasted a million times for, well, for a hundred blocks. And that's basically a black community, right? So, so in the white neighborhoods, all these fucking uh, toxic fucking uh, economic death traps are replaced with banks, right? So there's this banks fucking everywhere as I go running all around town, right? So one of these banks, they have uh, a billboard out front, like with the letters, like, you know, churches will often have letters where they put the message on the fucking thing, the message of the week from the Lord or from the preacher or some shit, right? Well, this particular bank says, uh, I, I really like their sign. I wish I would have took a picture of it a year ago. It says, you have 30,000 days to live. Something, I don't remember the rest of the tagline, but it went something, something, invest for the, invest now for the future or live your life now or something something roth r roth ira 401k some some shit my, my jew accountant fucking told me about a long time ago i wish i would have taken his advice on right <laughs> and yes shimmy is shimmy's not racist by the way <laughs> okay go look at my google me and look at my videos page right i'm the guy that films dominicans jews navajos Sioux, and filipinas too that's my tagline on x videos by the way for all my porno movies <laughs> and gotta put that shameless promo in there right but I, I do not discriminate. I, I am like the most least racist person in the world, actually. And I, I think that if you cannot joke about people's ethnicities and differences, then maybe there's something wrong with you. You should be able to, to have a laugh at everyone and everything, myself included, right? So back to the 30,000 days thing, right? I looked this up, right? I looked up and saw that the average age of the average age of a white man in America uh, lifespan, I should say, is 82 years old. And uh, for a white woman, it's 84 years old, right? And again, remember, lifespan is dependent on, and from what I've read and from my experience here, genetics, lifestyle, and environment. Also, other factors, stressors, and, you know, do you smoke? Are you overweight? You got diabetes, motherfucking thyroid, high blood pressure, gout, who the fuck knows, sickle cell anemia, all this shit, you know? 
if you have diseases, they're going to cut your lifespan short by, you know, a number of years or whatever. But probably the biggest killers would be, you know, the high sugar, high blood pressure, diabetes and all that shit. If you're hooked up to a dialysis machine that's filtering your blood every fucking Thursday or twice a week, you know, don't expect to live longer than another fucking decade or two, really. So, uh, you know, get that sugar under control. People quit with the fucking high fructose corn syrup, Coca-Cola, sodas, goddamn McDonald's, fast food, fried shit. It's fucking killing you. You know, you're, you're literally shaving 15 to 20 years off your lifespan to go and get that number one combo supersized. And you don't know it. You don't know how toxic that fucking pizza is. You know, niggers want to fucking complain. Oh, your goddamn porno movies. They're bad for society. So and so. Well, you think that Domino's pizza is going to make you live longer? You, you're, you know, you, th you think those motherfucking Newports and the goddamn Big Mac McChicken and all that shit's going to extend your lifespan? I mean, come on, right? People, you guys got to eat, but you don't realize how fucking important the food and nutrition and exercise and lack of stressing and not having to work fucking 16, 20 hour days for some goddamn crackers doing some shit that you hate that's, you know, killing you. You know, pe people don't realize the impact of their own life decisions, yet they're the first ones. They're the first motherfuckers to go and point their finger at me and call me the bad guy. Call me the fucking bad guy all you want. I'm in my condo in Thailand blogging and podcasting and laughing at you motherfuckers on the other side of the planet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> complete with six pack abs and the businesses and, you know, it, it, <laughs> for real. All right. So get back to my topic, go do the lifespan calculator, right. And think about the discrepancy. Now the life, the life, the life, uh, life insurance guy, he was a black guy, by the way, too, for the record. And, uh, I ended up telling him I wanted the 30 year policy. I don't think I'm going to be the typical, you know, African Negro and live to fucking 55. And, and by the way, just for the record, uh, on the news I saw on, uh, I don't watch TV or the news either. That's another toxic thing for your life, but, uh, whatever Reddit or YouTube or something, I read that John Singleton just died a couple of days ago, right? He was the producer director of uh, famous for boys in the hood movie. You know, one of my childhood movies that I watched, you know, he was dead at 51 years old. Black man, millionaire, rich. Why? Why is he dead? You know, and that goes back to the original thing. Black man in America, average lifespan, 55 years old. Think about all the barbecues, all the pork chops, all the high blood pressure, all the new ports. You know, you, you guys are worried about motherfucking me and some hoes. That's the least of your concerns, man. You guys got to get your health in check before you guys even consider going to another motherfucking Baptist church fucking revival some fucking Peter Popoff TV evangelist shit before you start talking shit to me. Go and fix your own fucking health problems, okay? Seriously. Or you're not even going to be around to bitch about me. I'll be attending your funerals first, for real. And that's serious, right? This is a very, very serious topic. I'm, I'm making jokes and trying to be lighthearted about this shit, guys, but for real, man, I've attended way too many motherfucking funerals, you know, and I'm not immune to the shit. That's why I exercise and buy supplements and work out and take care of my fucking health. That's why I take vacations all the fucking time and de-stress myself. It's why I don't have stressful, dangerous jobs anymore. It's why I don't work at Indian casinos, why I'm not a security guard or a truck driver. That's why I don't deliver newspapers in minus degree, minus 40 degree weather in Canada anymore. It's why I don't do any of this goddamn 16-hour telemarketing shifts and shit, because it kills me. It makes me fat. It's why I don't have a bitch wife anymore that cuts my lifespan short, that's physically abusive, that burns through money like it's like a resource that is not exchangeable for the time hours of my life, you know? It fucking hurts me when I look back at these things, right, and say to myself, fuck, that shit shaved off years of my lifespan. I'm going to have to work out extra hard and take extra vitamins and extra vacations to get that shit back, right? So in doing all this, I, that's why in the last couple of years, it's why I've been living in isolation. It's why I've been learning a lot of psychology, learning as much about being healthy and getting my body back in shape and getting my mind in shape and reading and no television and no, no toxic shit or no toxic people in my life. No more fake ass friends or fuck niggers or bitches or people that pretend like they're out there trying to play. Oh, help me, help me, shimmy, help me. Fuck you, nigger. Help yourself. Fix yourself. If you're coming at me and you're already looking all fucked up, you're already overweight, bad health, this, that, that's a warning. That's an external 
warning sign that you have issues you need to address and fix yourself. I cannot motherfucking help you. You need to go on the fucking internet on your phone. Listening to this show is a very good start, you know, but you need to go and fix your own fucking problems before you even think about, even think about asking for an extension of help from me or someone else. Help yourself, motherfucker. Shit. You know, if somebody can give you all the money, all the hookups, all their time, all their resources, and I've done this for a lot of people, you know, now, you know, motherfuckers will vouch for me. Maybe they won't, but I know who they are and I will name names if I have to. You know what I'm saying? You, nobody can ever say that I have not extended them a hand or whatever if they are in need. Okay, I look out for motherfuckers, right? But I'm not doing that shit no more because I realize it's futile. It's like as a... Uh, for you biblical motherfuckers, as Jesus says, you're casting, you're casting, uh, how does it say? You're casting pearls before swine. And that's what I've been doing a lot of my life. You know, motherfuckers are out there to ride people out. That's some people's modices. You know, this especially goes out to my family, fake ass friends, California motherfuckers, hairdressers, you name it, black bitches, niggers, white bitches, Asian bitches. People from all over the fucking globe have rowed me out because they've given me their sob stories about how hard they've had it or how hard they think they've had it. Yet none of them have ever been homeless like me. None of them have ever been to jail or prison like me. None of them have ever made the sacrifices I've made. None of them have ever lived off of fucking no food and fucking a packet of noodles and shit like that to make their dreams come true. You know, motherfuckers don't know what it's like to fucking, uh, you know, strip naked, be naked on the goddamn internet for just, for just fucking bread money and shit. They don't know what it's like to make these kind of sacrifices until you've done what I've done, nigga. Don't even think about asking me for shit, okay? I 